What's up everybody, it's Jake from Rev6. Welcome back to our channel. Uh, last video we talked about uh, piston ring orientation. Um, in this video, we're gonna go over uh, installing your pistons into your new cylinder and which direction um, they face, which is very important. From there, we'll jump into uh, main case and rod bearing selection, which is very important. Uh, you don't wanna have any type of mechanical fa failures when you're out on the trail. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and show you that too. So. Let's jump into it. Some of the tools you're gonna to need for this build, uh, you're gonna need uh, torque wrenches. Um, I prefer to use a digital one, just because um, these engines do require degrees after your initial torque setting. Um, you're gonna need, I like to use a quarter inch um, torque wrench when I'm doing case bolts and, and whatnot. Um, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter for your case bolts. You're gonna need 10 millimeter for your rod bolts. Depending on your year, you may end up needing, uh, I believe it's a 12 millimeter 12 point. Uh, you're gonna need an eight millimeter socket, a rubber mallet. You're gonna need some assembly lube. Um, this is also really good uh, using uh, assembly grease and fogging oil, obviously, um, for your cylinders. So those are some of the tools you're gonna need to complete this job, um, pretty straightforward. With our rings in place, um, one of the few things that you're gonna need, you're gonna need some fogging oil. Uh, you can use engine oil as well. Uh, it's really preference. Fogging oil is mainly used for, for long time storage if you're not gonna be running your engine. Uh, engine oil is good to use when you're gonna fired up as soon as you build it. A um, couple of things to go over um, before you install these. Um, there is, one of the things you'll, you'll notice on here is you have an arrow that faces, you know, it's, it's, it's facing a direction. And some pistons only have an arrow, um, R say EX, that stands for exhaust. That means that this arrow has to point towards the exhaust before you, or when you go to install it. Um, it's really easy to get it backwards. Um, these right here are actually a little bit smaller than these, and that's for the exhaust valves when uh, you know when the engine's running. Uh, so very important to note that. Uh, another uh, important thing to note is uh, these little slots right here, and I'll show you what those are for. Uh, it's very important that you keep this rod cap um, to this rod. Um, these are machined specifically. They cannot be interchanged. And yeah, big no-no, uh, don't do that. The other thing you wanna note is you have these little slots right here and that's for what they call tangs on your bearings. These tangs right here, they'll fit right in that slot. We're not gonna install those just yet because we're gonna go ahead and get these installed here. I like to keep them in line. See, both sides. And when you're standing at it from this angle, something you'll actually notice is uh, the exhaust skirts are actually skinnier than the intake side. Um, so I always, I always like to think of an arrow pointing towards me. Um, and if you flip it over, and then upside down, the arrow's towards me as well. Uh, just kind of helpful uh, to remember that. Another thing is when uh, you lay your cylinder down, it's very important with your arrows facing towards you, you want your, when your cylinder is upside down, you want your, um, where your tensioner is gonna go facing away from you. Um, just a few key things to remember when you do this and, and it'll save you a lot of trouble uh, down the road. So I've already 
I've already oiled up the cylinder. Um, now, uh, one of the things you want to do is you want to you want to use some fogging oil or, or engine oil, and you just want to coat this whole thing. You just want to get it um, as much as you can in there. Um, that way, uh, it, when you go to install it, it's nice and easy. Uh, some people can use gloves. Uh, I don't like to use gloves when I do this simply because um, when you're going to compress your rings, a lot of times it, you know, you'll piece of your glove will get stuck somewhere and catch one of these edges. Um, they are pretty sharp, so you really have to you know, be careful not to uh, scratch the cylinder walls. Very important that you pay attention to that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's much easier, all done by feel. And so let's just get right into it. Get a good coating there. And just another light coat in here, just for sh safe measure. Okay, so making sure your tang's away from you, arrows towards you. This is very important. One of the reasons why I spin it is to make sure that there's no other rings um, that have potentially bound up. So when you, the rings stay stationary when you spin this piston um, in that bore, and that's how you know all your rings are where they're supposed to be. You don't have any catching on the lip. A lot of times you have to use a flat blade screwdriver right in here, um, you know, and we actually lucked out there. So well, let's do the next one. We get our fogging oil. One of the other things I should probably mention is uh, in the last video I talked about your ring orientation. Well, and just from moving around and stuff, um, it always happens, but now I've got my ring gap there and my ring gap there. Um, you definitely don't want to do that. You want to go ahead and, and bring it back around. There's that one there. Boom. There's that one there. That one's got to come here. So yeah, you want to make sure all your rings are where they're supposed to be. And if you start twisting around and getting mess messed up, remember arrow faces towards you. Okay, tangs away from you, skinny side facing towards you. And uh, that's basically it. Um, you wanna be able to spin this around. All your rings are fully seated. And you can't really see it on your guys' end, but you'll be able to see scoring and scratching anywhere in here. And uh, it looks like we are good to go, so. Uh, from here, now we can uh, clean this up, wash our hands, and uh, jump into the bearing selection. 
Oh, now we got our pistons in. Now let's uh, get our case half, but we can't do that until we put our base gasket on there. Um, one of the few things to note, is there's a few holes right here. It can be put on backwards. Um, these are your oil passages. Very important you get those lined up. Let's take our case halves. I'll show you. You have these two dowel pins right here. And uh, you just want to make sure you get those lined up with that base gasket and it's, so it's not binding on you. So let's flip these cases. Sweet, nice and seated in there. And bring our rods back up. And now we can move on to our bearing selection. So when you go to uh, do your bearing selection, um, reading the service manual can be a little bit tricky. Uh, so you can see right here, you've got six letters on this crankshaft. And what gets a little confusing is the way, the way you read these. Um, believe it or not, it's actually starting from the mag side, not your PTO side. So when you go to do your bearing selection, it's very important that you, um, you're, you're going from right to left. Um, you will also see on a set of cases, um, you'll have four numbers. Some of them will say, uh, it'll say SC and then four numbers. Some of them will say SC and six numbers. Uh, the last two numbers are actually um, just in reference to the balance shaft, but the balance shaft only has one set of bearings, um, so it's not necessary. So keep in mind, it's always the first four letters um, on your crankcase. And then, and then you're asking, well, there's six there. And then on our rods, we each, you'll have a number, uh, either one through three, and It'll be on both rod caps and that's how you do that. So um, we'll go ahead and do a, I'll show you how, how we do it and on a piece of paper and makes it really easy to do. And yeah, let's, let's jump into it. This is a little sheet that I made, um, you know, for, for our company. Um, but you have a bearing chart here and depending on the letters on the crank and the numbers on the cases is which, it's what's going to tell you which color bearing to use. Um, it's a real just simple way that I like to do it. So we had G, 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 Y, G. Now, each of these letters is each journal on that. So right now we just want to do the mains. Um, so if you're going this way, and you're focused on mains, you're going to do the first one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. You are going to skip the two rods when you go to do this. So, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So our case numbers, they were twos. So we'll write two, 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 two. It's green bearing, green bearing, yellow bearing, green bearing. Now what I like to do for the rods, drop and arrow. Uh, we know the rod numbers are two. And that's gonna give us green. So now that we got that, flip it around so you guys can kind of see. Um, here's your chart, you know, the G, two. It's gonna give you a green bearing. Um, and I'll kind of show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and slide this over here. So on each of your bearings, they're gonna have a color. And if you buy one of these kits from us, it's gonna be the same thing. Um, typically we try to reach out to everybody and uh, we ask them for their case numbers. Um, when they give us their case numbers, we 
uh, make sure we get the correct bearings for you. Um, it's very important. So different colors, and then you'll notice your mains are slotted, your rods are skinny and solid. So very important. So now we know we need uh, three green mains and one yellow main and two green rod bearings. And I always like to write this down on the cases. So So our first one, remember it's starting from the mag side. So I like to just go ahead and go, we have a green. I'll do a little tiny G right here for the rod. I'll do another G here for that main. Another G for this rod. This one's our yellow. And then we got our, our G. And that just really helps. Um, it just helps you remember. Uh, another thing you wanna note is when you have your cases on this side. What I like to do is make sure that this piece is, uh, you know, facing the same way. So the, where the mag cover is going to go is facing the same way. Um, so what you're going to have, you're going to have a green, green, green. Green. Oh, whoops, yellow. That's a yellow. And so when you go to assemble this and you get your, your sealant going, you got all your, um, you got your rods, torques and everything else, you're just gonna go straight up and over just like that. So make sure it's just a flip. So yeah, so now we can go ahead and start getting these installed and um, get ready to um, torque some rod bolts. So let's go ahead and uh, install these um, main bearings into the case, main and rod bearings into the case. Um, I like to always take a little bit of any kind of cleaner. Um, right now I've got carb cleaner on hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that and just come through and just double check and make sure. Um, you don't want these, you don't want the, the actual case to be, to be too oily. Um, you know, you, you want your oil on the other side of the bearing. You want these bearings seated in here really well. And uh, don't forget to do the rods. All right, now that we got Got that nice and cleaned up. Let's go ahead and put these in here. So we'll start with our green bearing. Make sure the tangs are, are falling in these slots here. And our yellow. Okay, then we'll do our rods. to the other set of cases here. Oh. Brake cleaner and contact cleaner and stuff like that, that does, that does good. Um, you gotta be careful with the carb cleaner because uh, if you accidentally touch any of your Sharpie marker, um, <laughs> wipe it right off. Don't definitely don't want that to happen. Green. Green. 
Now, if you have a, a, a Razor 1000, you're gonna have these little jet pistons in the top half of the cases. Your, your center um, bearing is actually gonna be a solid, a solid bearing instead. That's how it builds oil pressure to um, just lubricate the pistons just a little bit better. So this is our other green. And our yellow. And don't forget one last rod. Or your, your rod caps, I should say, not last rod. Now what I like to do take any kind of assembly lube. Um, this stuff works really well. Come through and do all the mains. Forget your rods. Now keep in mind, um, these, these letters are are uh, just a series of measurements. Uh, if you go to tighten your cases down and it binds up, well, you're gonna have to pull them back down and you're gonna actually have to clean all that assembly lube off. You're gonna have to get yourself some plastic gauge. Uh, when using new cases, it's still a good rule of thumb to do plastic, um, to check with plastic gauge. Uh, realistically, um, on the new cases, you're typically, uh, you're typically okay. Uh, but whenever you're reusing a set of cases, it's always good to just double check. Um, if it binds up on you, you know, you might might need to uh, change a bearing color, you know, depending on on uh, the measurement you get from a plastic gauge. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. Um, but from here, that's uh, we can start installing the crank. And right, now before we get ready to drop this crank in, we're going to want to install the seal. That's where the grease comes in. Good time to take your oil pump chain and get that set in place. Now, one thing I did forget to mention is definitely do not want to forget your oil diverter. Just make sure it's seated down in there nicely. And from there, drop in our crank. Just kind of let them fall in there. Make sure your seal's lined up.
So now the first, the first torque setting is going to be nine foot pounds or 108 inch pounds. Simply just take nine, multiply it by 12 and uh, you get 108 and that's where you get your inch pounds if you're using a small torque wrench like this. I like to just make sure they're snug down first before I actually begin to torque so they're nice and even. Okay. The next round is 13 times 12, gives you 156. Not much more left. Now this is where the digital torque wrench comes in really handy. So the service manual for these actually says 90 to 105. I like to set it at 90. and go from there. Make sure to clear it on your next one. First thing you want to check is make sure your crankshaft rotates. Yep, that feels good. Nice and smooth. One thing you don't want to forget is your cam chain. Otherwise, you have to split the cases to get it back off or to reinstall. Now we got that. Now if your bearings are too tight and your crank doesn't want to spin, um, one of the things that you can do is uh, take some green plastic gauge, um, plastic gauge the bearings, get your measurements. Um, I've seen in some cases Sometimes you do have to change, you know, your blue's your thinnest, green's your, your, in, uh, your in the middle there, and yellow's your thickest bearing. And, you know, if your tolerances are too tight, you may need to jump up to a blue. Uh, so plastic gauge is a really good way of, of knowing that if you don't have a nice expensive set of micrometers. So the other, the other thing we can do next, make sure our mark on our crank is lined up. And it is right there. So now there's a little dot right here on your balance shaft. There's also a dot right here on your crankshaft. And expose that dot. 
It's right in here. And just rolling it into place. Verify it's in. Now we can begin with our sealant. Before we get these case halves buttoned up, um, there's a few things that you need specifically for this step. You're gonna need some gasket maker, um, carb cleaner, contact cleaner. Um, you just wanna make sure all the surfaces are, are nice and clean before you lay this stuff down. It's very critical. You will um, get leaks if it's not entirely clean. Now, this is something that we found just works really well. If you, if you buy a parts kit from us, all these bearings, um, they're gonna be in packages similar to this. It's gonna have a little foam insert in there. Um, sometimes they're packaged individually. But this is what you want. It's just like a really basic, just piece of foam. Um, that works really well. Cause when we lay this down, we're actually gonna do a nice dabbing motion all the way around. And then we're gonna give it time to set up. Be sure you write your bearings down if you do this, because if you tighten your cases up, I mean, the colors are still there, but once you use this carb cleaner, your marker just goes away. Come back through with a, a dry one. If you see any little cloth fibers anywhere, make sure to pull those out. So they do have little things you can actually screw on the end of this to actually make it a little easier and cleaner. Make sure you don't have any over dripping. through we'll do this other side you want to stay away from these oil passages here because when you go to squish it it will squish into those and it can restrict oil oil access so
I just take whatever's left on this thing and just do a very light coat. Just getting rid of all the rest of the stuff. It's definitely not necessary. Kind of gives you something to do in the meantime while you wait for this stuff to set up. Make sure if you do see any spots that just don't quite look like they... So if you let it tack up, you should be able to put a fingerprint in it. That's when you know it's good and ready. We're just gonna go straight up and over. These actually went together nice because they're a new set. Um, sometimes if you're reusing a set, sometimes you do have to give it just a little Nothing too too crazy. We can go ahead and install our bolts. So just want to make sure these are threading in nice. Now, if you do decide to use one of these, you want to make sure it's on the lowest setting possible so you don't strip these holes out. There's a torque sequence to them. One thing I like to do is take a magnet, just keep that chain out of there. You also just want to double check and make sure it didn't bind when you went to go assemble this. So if we look at our trusty cheat sheet here, I like to get them all snug down.
make sure you can still rotate the crank. I went through these, these first ones. I'll go ahead and do, just finish tightening these down all the way. I actually don't torque these ones until I've done my, uh, my degrees. So we can start doing that. 90. You start hearing any squeaking, that's not a good sign. Beeping is a good sign. And our finals, 26. You know, kind of what you're looking for. One, make sure your crank spins. Two, you'll see there's going to be a nice steady bead all the way al along. Even a steady bead that p protrudes out of here, here. And you just want to check the entire crankcase. Get some good squish there. Yeah, even into over here. So, yeah. And from that step, then we move on to the oil pump. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, in our next video, we'll go over uh, finishing up the rest of this bottom end and then we'll move into the top end. Um, we will leave a link down in the description below where you can get this cheat sheet. We will be offering a ton more inf information just um, overall for any of our engines on our website. So definitely keep a lookout for that. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.